In today's video, we're talking about the massive overcapacity in China's battery production and what it means for electric vehicles around the world. If you stick around, you'll learn why global battery demand is surging, how Chinese manufacturers are building far more factories than we currently need, and how this situation could drastically lower EV prices on a global scale. As always, all the sources I use to research this video are linked in the description, so you can dig deeper into the data yourself. Let's start with a shocking forecast. Bloomberg predicts that global demand for lithium-ion batteries will hit around 1.6 terawatt hours in the near future. However, Chinese companies alone say they're on track to build about 6 terawatt hours of battery production capacity by around the same time. That's nearly four times as much capacity as the rest of the world actually needs right now, according to multiple industry analyses. More capacity doesn't always mean more finished batteries, since factories often run below 100% production, and new facilities don't necessarily work at full capacity the moment they open. Still, the numbers are enormous, and this buildup is bound to affect battery supply, EV prices, and the global car market. Before we dive further, if you're enjoying this so far, go ahead and give the video a quick like. It really helps the channel grow and lets me know you want more content like this. Thanks for your support. Now, let's keep exploring. China's leadership identified battery technology and electric vehicles as a key leap forward for the auto industry over 20 years ago. They had multiple reasons, such as reducing air pollution in dense cities, diminishing dependence on foreign oil imports, and seizing a chance to lead in a complex, high-value industry where established global automakers didn't yet have a massive head start. Over the years, Chinese policymakers combined direct subsidies, favorable licensing rules, and massive government fleet purchases to jumpstart the EV and battery manufacturing sectors, according to official data. Local governments in many regions pitched in with cheaper land, easier permits, and reduced taxes for battery and EV makers. From day one, China made it clear this was a long-term commitment, paving the way for huge investments. While many countries viewed batteries as a low-margin commodity, China began buying and refining essential minerals like lithium and cobalt, ramping up domestic manufacturing of anodes, cathodes, and other battery components. Most global brands initially overlooked battery making as a niche industry, preferring to focus on assembling electronics. By the time the global market woke up to EVs, Chinese firms had already staked a strong claim on supply chains, locked in essential raw materials, and refined the manufacturing process to bring costs down. China also took the lead in stimulating domestic demand. EV buyers in major cities often got special perks, including skipping license plate lotteries or receiving direct purchase subsidies, while local governments purchased electric buses, taxis, and delivery fleets in huge quantities. This guaranteed revenue helped Chinese battery makers expand rapidly. And now, with years of head start, many are focusing on exporting both batteries and vehicles. We're already seeing battery prices dip lower, faster than previously predicted. Bloomberg's analysis shows that the price per kilowatt hour briefly slid below what experts thought we'd only see by 2030. In real-world terms, cheaper battery packs translate to cheaper EVs, which can make them more cost-competitive with combustion engine cars. Since batteries can make up 20-40% to 40 of an EV's total cost, any big shift in pricing has a ripple effect on vehicle affordability. This is especially apparent in China, where you can already find small electric cars for as little as $10,000 to $20,000 and mid-range models under $30,000 because Chinese factories are prepared to make far more battery cells than even the domestic market demands, car makers either have to innovate and cut prices or risk being left behind. As lower prices scale globally, we may soon see similar discounts spread to Europe, North America, and beyond. Legacy automakers relied heavily on internal combustion engine ICE vehicles. But the rise of Chinese battery makers and the speed of EV cost reductions caught many by surprise. Some, like Volkswagen, chose to partner with Chinese battery suppliers, while companies like BMW and Ford also source large portions of their EV batteries from Chinese giants. Building EVs is different from building ICE vehicles. 
and the supply chain for batteries is a crucial piece of that puzzle. Automakers who can't secure enough cheap batteries struggle to match the prices of competitors. Meanwhile, consumers in many regions are becoming more concerned about emissions and long-term costs, so interest in electric options continues to grow. Chinese EV makers, including BYD, dominate their domestic market and have started exporting to emerging markets. In places like Thailand, they are establishing factories and offering a much wider selection of EVs than local dealerships have ever seen. Arriving with lower prices and large volumes of ready-to-go battery supply, they compete strongly against Western and Japanese brands. For countries lacking significant domestic auto industries, these new Chinese brands can be an appealing alternative. Not every country welcomes a large influx of cheap imported EVs, however, and Europe, Brazil, and Turkey are among those that have imposed higher tariffs or new regulations on Chinese imports. These measures might keep local producers afloat for a while, but can also result in higher costs for consumers. From the Chinese perspective, a certain level of overcapacity can be seen as strategic. More factories mean a cushion for future demand as EV adoption grows, and the ability to export at competitive prices helps Chinese manufacturers capture a larger share of the global market. However, an excessive surplus can cause bankruptcies among weaker players who can't keep up with the scale of industry leaders. And major price drops may lower profit margins so much that it slows the industry's ability to innovate. There's also a risk of global backlash, with countries placing more barriers on imports of Chinese batteries and EVs. Many analysts still believe that falling battery prices will be good news overall, accelerating the shift from fossil fuels to more sustainable transport solutions. Global battery demand for EVs and energy storage may keep climbing, closing the gap between supply and demand faster than we expect. Renewables need large-scale energy storage to stabilize intermittent power from solar and wind and cheaper battery packs could help fuel these projects. Overcapacity might drive innovation as manufacturers look for new chemistries, such as sodium ion or solid state batteries, to stand out. This could mean better energy density, faster charging, and cheaper production processes. Chinese companies have already made big investments in lithium iron phosphate LFP batteries, a chemistry that is relatively cheap and safe compared to older nickel-based alternatives. Cheaper EVs will likely shape consumer perceptions worldwide, especially if people can see real financial benefits in fuel savings and lower maintenance costs. A flood of affordable electric models could also enhance charging infrastructure, extend battery warranties, and improve after-sales support. Drivers who were worried about range or price might find the new wave of EVs far more appealing, from local city buses in Shenzhen to emerging markets in Southeast Asia and Latin America, Chinese battery makers have positioned themselves to supply the world. Their combined capacity overshoots today's global demand by a substantial margin. But that surplus is already helping to lower prices and expand EV adoption. Meanwhile, Western car makers and governments are scrambling to catch up, and the race for leadership in battery technology may already be tipping decisively in China's favor. Thanks to this immense production push, we may see EV prices continue to fall, possibly transforming the automotive industry faster than anyone imagined. Cheaper, more efficient batteries mean more electric cars on the road and a drastic shift in how we power our transportation systems. If you enjoyed today's breakdown and learned something new, remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more deep dives into tech and innovation. Also, don't forget to check out the links to all the sources in the description if you'd like a more detailed look at the data we covered. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.